video is about scatter plots and lines of best fit. The table shows the average salary and millions of dollars for professional baseball players from 1996 through 2002. Let T equal zero represent the year 1996. So we have zero representing 1996, which means one is 1997, two is 1998, and so on. So we don't have to put those big numbers on the graph. And we're asked to construct a scatter plot for this data. So essentially, we're just going to take each of these x, y pairs. We have x being our year, and y is the salary. Take each of those x, y pairs and represent it as a point on the coordinate plane. But before we can put points on this graph, we need to label the x and y axes so we know where these points are going to go. The x-axis is fairly easy to label because those numbers are already spaced out evenly. We have 0 representing 1996, then 1 is 1997, 2 is 1998, and so on. And try to evenly space out these points. Use a ruler if you have one available. And label your x-axis here. The y-axis is just a little bit more tricky because those numbers aren't spaced out evenly. But you know you need to go from about 1.0 up to about 2.5. So based on how much space you have, figure out a scale that works. So you're counting by the same amount each time, and you're able to fit in all those numbers in between. So I'm going to skip some numbers between 0 and 1.0 with that little wiggle at the base of the axis and have my lowest point be 1.0. I'm going to count by 2 tenths because that seems to be about how much room I have so I can get up to the highest number that I need without running out of space. That fit pretty well. Don't forget to label your y-axis. I have to move this here so I have some room to label it. My y-axis is salary. And I like to put in millions if there's some kind of specification like that to be more specific. Okay. Now I'm ready to put my points on the coordinate plane. My first point is located at 0, comma, 1.1, the point there. Then I have a 1, 1.3. 2, 1.4, 3, 1.6, 4, 1.8. Again, use a ruler if you have one, so this is as precise as you can be. 5, 2.1, and 6, 2.3. Okay? So now I've got my seven points. And as you can see, they're trending as if they're in a, going upward in a line. Uh, if you tried to make a line that went through them, it wouldn't exactly go through all the points. Some would be above and some would be below. And that's what we're going to be asked to do on the next slide. Come up with the best line we can to approximate the shape of this data. So it says calculate the equation of a best fit line for the data. So here's a reconstruction of the graph from the previous slide. It's got my seven points on it. And I'm going to try to come up with a line that approximates the shape of this data. So as you are doing this on paper, use a ruler and just kind of move the ruler around until you feel like you have the same number of points above the line as you have below the line. Looks like I need to move the bottom of my line a little so that the same number of points are above as below. Now it looks like I have, so I can go directly through there. I can move this just a touch. Okay, this is pretty good. It's never going to be exact unless you're using a calculator or a computer. But yeah, the best line you can come up with, with about the same number of points above and below the line, and it's okay if some of them are directly on the line. So now we're going to come up with the equation of this by finding two points that are directly on our line, calculating slope and intercept. So it looks to me like this point, our first point down here, located at 0, 1.1, is directly on our line. And none of the other points really fall directly on the line. I don't want to use that other low point because they're just so close together. Uh, let's say if I made a line at about 5.5 up to my best fit line, it looks like that would be at a, almost exactly 2.2. So maybe I'll use the point 5.5, 2.2 as my other point for this line. And it's okay for you to do that. Find another point on the line and use those coordinates. So to calculate the equation, I want to start by finding slope. Subtract my y values, 2.2 minus 1.1, over subtract the x values, 5.5 minus 0. So 1 over 5.1 uh, over 5.5. It's okay to get a decimal for a slope here. So you want to get it all the way down to a decimal for a scatter plot. So the slope is positive 0 0.2. And I'll use slope-intercept form to finish this out because I already have the y-intercept here. This point is the y-intercept. 
because that's where the line crosses the y-axis. So I know slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. I already have m, 0 0.2, and b is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept, which is 1.1 here. So there's the equation of my best fit line. I'm going to use this on the next slide. So let me copy and paste this here. Copy. On the next slide, I'm asked, in the context of the problem, what does the y-intercept mean? And in the context of the problem, what does the slope mean? Let's paste my equation in here so we can analyze it. I'm asked what the y-intercept means. So if you remember the original problem, it was about salary, average salary of baseball players. And at the time zero, which was 1996, the average salary was 1.1 million. And that's all that question means. What does the y-intercept mean here? So to answer part A of this question, the y-intercept means the salary in 1996. So just asking you to put the real life scenario into the equation that you've come up with. Figure out what those numbers represent here. In the context of the problem, what does the slope mean? What does that 0 0.2 mean? So slope, or rate of change, is the rate at which something is changing. And in this case, it's changing by 0 0.2 what per what, right? We're talking about salary changing per year. So changing by positive 0 0.2 million dollars per year. So the salary, I mean the, uh, the slope here, stands for, The slope here stands for the salary increase per year. If it had been a negative slope, that would have been a salary decrease per year because it's positive 0 0.2. That indicates that our salary is increasing each year. And you're often asked to use your equation to predict something that's going to happen in the future that would be off your graph. So we're going to use our equation to predict the average salary for baseball players in 2007. So our equation, if you remember, was 0 0.2x plus 1.1, and we're asked in the year 2007. So that's our x variable. That's our year. But if 1996 was time equals 0, right, then 2007 would be 11. So when we plug this into our equation, just remember to use... 11 as x and not 2007. To evaluate this, and you can round it because this is a word problem, right? We're talking about money. It looks like the average salary in 2007 we can predict to be $3.3 million. And that is all.